Welcome to my YouTube channel. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Understanding the Development Controls Under Rules 7 and 8 of the Revised Implementing Rules and Regulations of PD No. 10, 96, National Building Code of the Philippines. Welcome back to our discussions on determining the development potential of a lot and we are focusing on an R1 zone property. So this is part 3. We have residential R1 zone and our sample problem today will be a single detached house uh, in an R1 zone property. But our total lot area here is quite big. We have 450 square meters. It is an inside lot with a 15 meter wide frontage facing south to a 14 meter wide road. So if we are going to refer to table 8.g.7, this is the suggested minimum lot sizes, we can see that our example here is bigger than the suggested minimum lot size of 301 square meters inside lot R1. So let us see. Uh, we draw the lot. We have a frontage of 15 meters. So we have a depth of 30 meters uh, facing uh, south to a 14 meter wide road. So with this uh, lot information, we want to know what is the development potential of this lot or up to how much extent can we exploit or do develop this property. So our first development control is about the allowable maximum building footprint or the AMBF and the allowable maximum percentage of site occupancy. And in determining the AMBF and the maximum PSO, our first uh, factor to consider is the minimum setbacks as provided in table 8.2. So we have for R1 again, 4.5 is the front and the, the side and rear will have a minimum of 2 meter setback. So if we apply this minimum setbacks to this lot, you will see that you can arrive at a building uh, wherein the maximum dimension will be 11 meters by 23.5. And so to compute for the AMBF, you just multiply 11 by 23.5, you get an area, maximum area for the building at 258.5 square meters and convert that to its percentage equivalent for the maximum PSO just divide it by the TLA of 450 you will get a maximum PSO of 57.4% and round it up to 57% now we have also another provision in rule 7 and 8 and this is table 7.1 wherein you can find a value for the AMBF here so the AMBF here is expressed as a percentage of the total lot area and for an R1 and that is without firewall in an inside lot, the AMBF is equivalent to 50% of the TLA. So our maximum PSO is 50% and our AMBF is 50% of 450 square meters will give you 225 square meters so the rule is to compare and get the most stringent so looking at these values which we derive using the minimum setbacks and using table 7.1 we can see that the most stringent here is based on table 7.1 so our final value now for your maximum PSO is 50% of the TLA and your AMBF will be 225 square meters. So that is now our AMBF and the maximum PSO. So if it, it, it is uh, smaller, it means that uh, your uh, setbacks can be bigger than the minimum setbacks. So after determining the maximum part of the lot that can be occupied by the building, we can now go into determining 
the remaining part of the lot which is the open space so we have the allowable minimum total open space within lot or the minimum TOSL we also have the allowable minimum unpaved surface area the minimum USA and also we have the allowable maximum impervious surface area the maximum ISA and lastly is the maximum allowable construction area or MACA so let us start with determining the allowable minimum total open space within land as provided in uh, rule 7 and 8 it says that the minimum total open space within lot are portions of the TLA or the lot that is not occupied by the maximum allowable PSO. So what we do is just to deduct from the TLA the A and B, F and the maximum PSO values that we have uh, derived earlier. So our TLA is 450 minus the 225 square meters will give you 225 square meters also minimum TOSL and 100% minus 50% will give you 50% of the TLA as your minimum TOSL now we go to another uh, reference for the minimum TOSL and this is table 8.g.6 it says here that uh, for an R1 of course that is without firewall in an inside lot, the minimum TOSL is 50% of the TLA. And uh, computing that for that, it will be the same as the values that we have derived earlier. 50% of 450 square meters will give you also 225 square meters. Continuing with the computation for the open spaces, we have this portion for the allowable minimum unpaved surface area or the minimum USA. And the reference for computing for this for an R1 zone property is that the minimum USA will be equivalent to the area of the front yard using the minimum setbacks. So we only have to multiply our minimum setbacks of 4.5 with the uh, width of the lot or 15 meters that will give you the value of the minimum USA at 67.5 square meters or in percentage that will be 15% of the TLA now, the other part of the open space is the allowable maximum impervious surface area or the maximum ISA so to determine the maximum ISA, we make use of the area of the side yards and the rear yards using the minimum setbacks as the reference. So we have for yard 1, uh, that will be equivalent to 2 meters times 23.5, that is 47 square meters. The uh, other yard will also give you the same value, 47 square meters, and the rear yard will give you a value of uh, 30 square meters. So if we add all of those three, we'll give you a total of 124 square meters, and just divide it by the total lot area of 450, will give you 27.55%, rounded off to 28%. So you may notice here that there is a portion that was not included in our computation, this dark blue portion here, which is actually part of the AMBF if we made use of the minimum setbacks. But because our AMBF, the most stringent, is based on another reference which is much smaller than the one based on the minimum setbacks, we have this extra space which could be part of the maximum allowable construction area. So we compute now for the maximum allowable construction area. So this is the development controls for the uh, part of the lot wherein you can have a, uh, a construction so that could include the portion for the building which is the A and B F maximum PSO as well as the maximum portion for your impervious.
or it is the area which doesn't include your minimum USA because your minimum USA is the minimum non-construction area. So the, the easiest way to compute for the MACA is just to deduct this uh, minimum USA from the TLA. So our TLA is 450 and we deduct the 67.5 square meters. Okay, to get the remaining part which is your maca so you you will arrive at a maca of 382.5 square meters or uh, an equivalent of 85 percent so 100 percent minus the 15 percent minimum usa the maca will be at 85 percent so if we are going to summarize the development controls that are taken at grade level, we have this, uh, the AMBF at 225 square meters, 50% uh, maximum PSO, and the corresponding minimum TOSL is 50% also, 225 square meters. Our minimum USA is 15% representing the area of the front yard. Uh, at uh, 67.5 square meters and our maximum ISA is 28% or 124 square meters. Our MACA will be at 85% or 382.5 square meters. So if we add our MACA here and our minimum USA, it will be equivalent to 100% or 382.5 square meters plus 67.5 square meters will give you a total of 450 square meters. So we now go to the development controls uh, uh, with regards to the floor areas of the building. So we have the allowable maximum gross floor area and the allowable maximum total gross floor area. So, to determine the allowable maximum gross floor area for the building, we make use of this formula. The allowable maximum GFA will be your TLA times the maximum recommended FLAR. For R1, we have 1.5 is the designated FLAR. So, again, if you have a zoning ordinance that will prescribe a much restrictive uh, or much lower FLAR, then you have to follow the more restrictive provision. So here, we only have to multiply our TLA of 450 times this FLAR recommended of 1.5 will, uh, will give you 675 square meters. This is for the allowable maximum GFA. Now, to compute for the allowable maximum TGFA, we have our reference is table 7.1. So, for an R1, uh, look, that is an inside lot, the maximum TGFA is 3 times 50% of the TLA. So, the 3 represents the building height limit, the number of floors, times 50% of uh, 450 or the AMBF of 225 will give you a maximum TGFA of 675 square meters. So if we compare this with the maximum GFA earlier, it is the same value. So another way to compute for the allowable maximum total gross floor area is to base it on your maximum GFA. So we have this table 7.G.2. This is the conversion table. We can convert the value of the GFA to the TGFA by multiplying whatever GFA you have to uh, TGFA uh, by these conversion factors. So for R1, we have 1.5 as the multiplier. So our maximum GFA, which we have uh, uh, derived earlier, is 675 square meters. And we multiply that with this 1.5 multiplier. So our maximum TGFA, therefore, will be 675 times 1.5. will give you a value of 1,012.5 square meters, which is uh, higher than the earlier uh, uh, computation for the maximum TGFA. 
So if we are going to compare now the development controls on the different floor areas of the building, we have for the maximum GFA at 675 square meters, our maximum PGFA based on table 7.1 is also 675 and our maximum PGFA based on that conversion table, table 7.3.2 is 1012.5. So, between the two maximum TGFA values, the more stringent is the one based on table 7.1. So, that's it for our third presentation for R1. So, watch out for our succeeding videos on the other different zones for residential, commercial, institutional, and industrial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. For a more comprehensive study on rules 7 and 8 of the revised IRE of the NBCP, please enroll at Atlas CDC Review. Email us at atlascdcreview at gmail.com or you may join us at our FB group page, www.facebook.com groups, Alera View.